most endorsements don't count for much in this business, but Musk is has, is in, incredibly popular, uh, and he has an appeal to a demographic that Democrats have been been struggle with there. And to some people, uh, that they see him as that's Tony Stark. Uh, he's the the world's richest man, and he's undeniably a brilliant guy. So I think uh, that that is a situation for Democrats. We would have to acknowledge. Elon Musk is undeniably brilliant, according to John Fetterman. Mm, very interesting thing for a Democrat to say. I would have to disagree with that. But in fairness to John Fetterman, from his perspective, it's understandable why he'd think that Elon Musk is undeniably brilliant since he's still stuck in 2009 mentally and his brain is more or less putting at this point. But his overall point here is that Elon Musk is a powerful Trump ally because his appeal as a surrogate could galvanize men in states like Pennsylvania to get out and vote for Donald Trump. And while I do agree that Musk is useful to Trump, it's not because he's particularly persuasive or useful in his capacity as a surrogate. He's useful because he's pumped $70 million into the pro-Trump super PAC that he created and is algorithmically boosting pro-Trump propaganda on the social media platform that he owns while suppressing anti-Trump content. The Daily Beast reports Elon Musk's ex-social media platform has reportedly worked with Donald Trump's campaign to censor material that could be harmful to the the former president's White House chances as part of a pattern of election interference that is unprecedented in U.S. history. And to give you one example, he banned journalist Ken Klippenstein at the behest of the Trump campaign after Ken published the J.D. Vance dossier, even though Musk himself lambasted Twitter when he didn't own it for suppressing the New York Post's Hunter Biden laptop story for a day back in 2020. But look at what he posted before he bought Twitter. I mean, so much for Twitter remaining, quote, politically neutral to deserve public trust, right? I guess that's all out the window now since he's the owner of Twitter and can do what he wants and there's really nothing that any of us can do about it if we disagree. But I am curious if journalist Matt Taibbi can maybe get us a uh, Twitter files on the censoring of Ken Klippenstein. It'd be nice to know what went on behind the scenes there. Or do we just care about free speech when it affects Republicans? Don't answer that, Matt. I already know the answer. But I say all this to say it is Elon's wealth and ability to control the flow of information that makes him useful to Trump, not his status as a surrogate, because quite frankly, this man is a fucking idiot. He spends all day on Twitter crying about declining birth rates while fear-mongering about immigration, which is interesting. And he's also talking about how non-citizens are voting, which isn't happening. And at Trump's rally, he recycled conservative tropes boomers have been using for decades, like, oh, the Second Amendment is there to protect the First Amendment. Wow, that's brilliant. I've never heard that one before. Where do you, where do you come up with this? But putting aside you know, all of the vapid horseshit that comes out of his mouth. He just acts like a child. At Trump's rally, he was famously jumping around on stage like a fucking buffoon. And I feel like he's what would happen to a toddler if you pump their brain with white supremacist propaganda and boomer political means. That's Elon Musk in a nutshell. So no, I don't think that this dipshit is particularly charismatic or useful as a surrogate. That's not to say that he has zero appeal because, you know, he does have an army of simps still somehow, and he's kind of the dumb person's idea of an intellectual, which makes sense why John Fetterman thinks that he's brilliant. But that's becoming increasingly niche. Like the Elon Musk fanboy is just turning into a right winger who likes Elon Musk, right? He's not the guy who's like Tony Stark that's going to get us to Mars now. He's your Fox News grandpa that's spreading conspiracy theories about how white people are being replaced. And his words won't move the needle that much, but his money will move the needle. Hence why I say his ability to influence the election, it's going to be minimal when it comes to him saying Trump is good. But the money, that's where it counts. However, John Fetterman is warning Democrats to tread lightly when it comes to Elon Musk and to think twice before we call him weird or make fun of him for jumping around on stage, which is weird because, again, Elon Musk, insofar as he's able to influence the election, it's controlling the flow of information, not saying things or not us saying things about him. I don't think that's going to tank Kamala's chances, but nonetheless, Fetterman's going to make the case that we should all be nicer to Elon Musk. You know, some Democrats just, you know, just mock uh, uh, Musk and, and say, oh, they, you know, we can laugh at this. We can goof at it. He's jumping up and down and, and those things. And I'm like, well, 
you know, we, if we ignore that as a, as a problem, you know, we, I think we could do that as our apparel. Now, if you don't speak barbarian, allow me to translate. He thinks Democrats shouldn't make fun of Elon Musk. And the only reason why I'm able to decipher what he's saying is because he thought that that point was so good, he made it again on CNN in an interview with Caitlin Collins. Musk, uh, it's undeniable that he's successful. He's the world's richest man. And he's been involved in a lot of important things like SpaceX or AI and those things. And he has he has a brand. And that's that's attractive to a demographic that that, that we need to have to win in Pennsylvania. Uh, and it's not even about his checkbook. You know, again, I think him being an active surrogate, I think the, the New York Times des, uh, described him as effectively living in Pennsylvania and he's going to be showing up and going around. It, I've, uh, that's going to be that's going to be mattered. And, and uh, the Democrats, for us to make fun of him for jumping up and down or that things, uh, you know, we would do that at our peril. Uh, you know, it's it's significant. That Elon Musk, he's just so brilliant. You know, he has so many successful companies like SpaceX that wouldn't exist without government subsidies. But nonetheless, he's brilliant and we shouldn't make fun of him, according to John Fetterman. I mean, Jesus, John, you're already filleting him, so you don't have to make it so sloppy that he'll have to wipe his ass too when it's done, goddamn. What are you thinking? I don't get what he's trying to accomplish here, but I'm sorry, you're wrong, John. And this is a loser mentality here. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls were winning when they were making fun of Republicans and attacking them and knocking them specifically for being weird, remember that? And she stopped doing that and now she's losing. She's trying to hold hands with them and sing Kumbaya, which is what I think Fetterman wants, and that's clearly not helping. And I just, I hate this self-imposed double standard so much because Republicans are the party of fuck your feelings, and they thrive on triggering the libs or drinking the tears of snowflakes. Trump literally is threatening to use the military against the far left enemy within, but how dare Democrats call Republicans weird or criticize a Trump surrogate or imply that they're deplorable? I mean, when we talk about them, we have to be mindful of their delicate feelings and use kid gloves regardless of how ruthless and cruel they become. But yet when they talk about us, they can call us degenerates and groomers and misgender our trans friends and we're supposed to be okay with it. I'm sorry, but no, if they're going to dish it, they should be able to take it. But Fetterman simping for Elon Musk, even if it's strategic, speaks to a bigger problem with the Democratic Party's politics. They've lost sight of the threat that big money poses to politics. Again, Elon Musk is the richest man on the planet doing everything in his power to elect a man who's going to get in office and cut his taxes. And Fetterman isn't talking about that. Fetterman is more concerned about the mean things that we might say about Elon Musk. How are you not talking about this corruption? It is corruption that is destroying our country. The commodification of our electoral system and entire system of governance is tearing our country apart at the seams. Here's just one example. Elon Musk isn't just trying to silence Trump's critics. He's trying to silence his own critics as well. And I say this because Media Matters published a report detailing how ads were appearing alongside neo-Nazi content that was being posted on Twitter at a time when hate speech was proliferating in large part because Elon Musk himself was pushing white supremacist conspiracy theories. Musk then decided to use his wealth to try to silence them for doing basic journalism and he sued them and didn't just sue them he sued them into oblivion which forced them to lay off more than a dozen staffers so they could pay their legal fees to fight him and it's pretty obvious to everyone that this is a slap suit and it's going to be pretty hard for him to prove that their reporting is tantamount to defamation if that's what he's suing them for i don't know if that's exactly what it is but it's something similar to that but still it's a shameless ploy to silence them to scare them or anyone else for that matter and to never criticize criticizing Elon Musk. And even if he can't win, it's still going to be very costly for Media Matters to defend themselves, whereas that's not going to be the case with Elon Musk. He has all the money in the world, so it's not going to be a problem. He can drag this out as long as he wants. But regardless, the lawsuit shouldn't go anywhere since it's clearly frivolous. But the problem is that he also has an advantage there, too, because the judge in the Media Matters case refused to recuse himself despite a glaring conflict of interest. NPR reported that U.S. District Judge Reed O'Connor of the Northern District of Texas had made an investment in Tesla of between $15,001 and $50,000. O'Connor has delivered a string of decisions in the Media Matters lawsuit in favor of Musk, who argues the advocacy group disparaged X, his social media site. And that's pretty damn alarming. Now, the judge hasn't bought or sold Tesla stock since taking up the case, and Tesla doesn't have equity in Twitter. But if things go south for Elon Musk, even if they don't go south, and he gives off a testimony that's stupid, 
it could negatively impact Tesla's stock and in turn hurt the judge's stock portfolio. He has a vested interest in making sure that Elon Musk's image is peachy keen. Otherwise, he might lose money as well. But the judge doesn't think that's the case. And now he's making Media Matters pay Twitter's legal fee for the disclosures that they filed. Media Matters is saying, hey, let's all be a little bit more transparent. Let's file these disclosures. There's fees for that. And the judge is saying, mm, you're going to have to pay their fees now for that. Isn't it amazing? You're going to pay the fees for the richest man on the planet because you asked for more transparency. That's what I mean when I say that wealth is destroying our country. Rich people like Elon Musk have created a two-tier justice system where they're able to get away with things that poor people are not able to get away with, and they have the audacity to co-opt that term and say that the real two-tier justice system is Trump versus everyone else. He's the one who's overly penalized, not poor people, not peasants, not working Americans. It's rich people like Donald Trump. That's how we have a two-tier justice system. It's disgusting. It's Orwellian. But it's not enough for Elon Musk to have an advantage in our court system because a lot of judges are corrupt or have all the money in the world because he's now using his America PAC to canvas for Donald Trump in key swing states. And he's offering $47 payouts to people who get swing state voters to sign a simple petition supporting the First and Second Amendments. And to be very clear, this is about getting voter data. But he thinks that voter data is worth $47 a person, assuming that he's willing to actually make those payments. But he's openly using his wealth for all of us to see to influence the outcome of an entire election because he thinks that Trump getting elected is going to help him grow his wealth. So all this money that he's spending is an investment that could pay off if Trump gets in office and cuts his taxes. But Fetterman is going on national television and begging people to not make fun of this guy because of the potential appeal that he may or may not have with voters in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, that is the worst advice ever. You have a billionaire LARPing his anti-establishment while campaigning for a Republican that he wants to elect so he can get another tax cut. He is the easiest target ever, and you're telling Democrats, mm, let it go. That doesn't make any sense. Imagine if Democrats slammed Elon Musk for delusionally thinking that he's anti-establishment when he is the embodiment of the naked establishment politics that voters have come to hate. That could be effective. But Democrats, they're reluctant to uh, make this argument, and they'll probably take John Fetterman's advice because they've got their own set of billionaires that are surrogates caping for them, too, like Mark Cuban, who I, uh, I don't think is a good surrogate. And it's worrying to see them put him out on the campaign trail for them. He's trying to get Lena Khan fired from the FTC because of his own financial interests. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like Kamala is going to take the bait. But this kind of speaks to the problem of billionaires being so entrenched in politics. But I mean, this reluctance to even criticize Elon Musk is just a terrible strategy. And it's a microcosm of a bigger problem with Democrats not wanting to go for the jugular. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls were winning when they were having fun and calling them weird. And now we've reached the point where they've stopped doing that. And she's trying to reach out to Republicans and put them in her administration. And John Fetterman is saying, oh, my God, don't even criticize this fucking freak, Elon Musk. It's just embarrassing. It's a terrible strategy. And it speaks to how out of touch John Fetterman has become with average Americans and people in Pennsylvania, because to the extent that Elon Musk has appeal to the people in Pennsylvania, they're long gone. You're not going to win them over. But you can win them over, win over working people if you say, hey, look at this billionaire campaigning for Donald Trump. He's for them. We're for you. But instead, we have uh, John Fetterman glazing up Elon Musk, the richest man on the planet who happens to be a fascist because he's worried to criticize him for fear of turning off voters. John, just do us all a favor and shut the fuck up. Not only can you take a load, you can take the ultimate load, and even better than that, that you find your true calling and destiny in your willingness to take the ultimate load. load, load. Have it your way, buddy. buddy, buddy.